Atrial fibrillation is a common arrhythmia. It affects the atria and it increases the risk of thromboembolic events, and in particular, ischemic stroke and systemic embolization. In patients with atrial fibrillation, it is important to assess their risk of stroke or systemic embolization. As of 2014, the American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association guidelines recommend the use of the CHADS-2 VAS scoring system to assess overall stroke and systemic embolization risk. Among patients with atrial fibrillation who have a CHADS-2 VAS score of greater than or equal to, to 2, uh, I do use it and I, I provide anticoagulation for those individuals. The Gloria AF registry is an international registry of over 15,000 patients. In phase two of the study, the investigators were interested in understanding the baseline characteristics of atrial fibrillation and anticoagulation use in the current era, in the era of novel oral anticoagulants. These investigators have recently demonstrated that compared to a time when novel oral anticoagulation use was not available, there has been a significant increase in, uh, in anticoagulation in general, and in particular, these investigators have noted in the United States as well as Europe an increase in the use of NOAC therapies. In addition, these investigators have also noted that there are about 10 to 20 percent of individuals across the world that do not receive adequate anticoagulation for stroke prevention in nonvalvular atrial fibrillation. The Gloria AF registry is only one of many international registries for understanding anticoagulation use in individuals with atrial fibrillation. Again, this phase two study included only 50, about 15,000 patients. Recognize that now we have available very large international registries of hundreds of thousands of patients. The American College of Cardiology has its own, uh, own registry of atrial fibrillation patients, and we recognize that the 80 to 20 percent anticoagulation under treatment rate reported in Gloria is, uh, in my opinion, quite optimistic. I would, I would think, I, my, my own opinion on this is that based on various data, it appears that the anticoagulation under treatment rate is much higher than that, uh, on the order of about probably 40 to 50 percent. More importantly, these investigators have demonstrated that, the, that there is a significant proportion of individuals who are prescribed NOAC therapies. Uh, in fact, the majority of anticoagulation prescriptions in this registry suggest the use of NOAC therapies. I don't believe that is the case uh, across the world right now. I think, again, it, these findings are quite optimistic from the standpoint of NOAC use and NOAC availability. I think the final issue here that I think is important to recognize is that these are, uh, th this study, the way it's designed, is to look at initial prescription. However, we recognize in the field of atrial fibrillation and anticoagulation, and especially with NOAC therapies, that adherence is also a major issue. So it's not just about the initial prescription, it's also about adherence. And I think we need, to, we need a better understanding on uh, the, the continuation of any of these therapies in the AF population.